Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Today we will continue with linear regression. Today's topic is sampling distribution of regression coefficients. So, what we will cover in this lecture? Sampling distribution of regression coefficient, test of individual regression coefficient and group of coefficients, confidence interval on the individual regression coefficients. So, let us <coughs> let us now start with the regression equation. You have already seen that that the linear regression equation is y equal to x beta plus epsilon, where beta we have k plus 1 beta values like beta 0, beta 1 to beta k k plus 1 into 1 and x is the design matrix epsilon is the error terms and you have all also seen that the estimate of beta is x transpose x transpose x inverse x transpose y that also you have seen where y x is design matrix y is data matrix and this part we have completed in last class. So, you, if you see the slide, uh, you see that there are n plus 1 observation for y, beta is k plus 1 into 1, because the parameters of regression and x is the design matrix, where the first column is all having one value and then these are the data on uh, k number of uh, factors, other way I can say k number of predictor variable x 1 to x k. Essentially, x is a n, n into k plus 1 matrix. And <coughs> from sampling, uh, sampling we know the sampling theory we know that the estimate beta cap this is a random variable. So, it has uh, its expected value and variance component also. Suppose, we want to know what is the expected value of beta cap? It will be beta and that is what is unbiased estimation. Means, beta cap is the estimate of beta, beta is the regression coefficient vector which is from the population point of view and beta cap is the regression coefficient, the estimate of this vector from the sample data. Okay. So, um, it can be proved also that expected value of beta cap is beta. So, how can you do? You, you can write that expected value of beta cap equal to expected value of x transpose x inverse x transpose y this. Then you can write expected value of x transpose x inverse x transpose then y value is nothing but x beta plus epsilon you are getting from here. And if you multiplied this then you get x transpose x inverse x transpose x beta x transpose x inverse x transpose into x beta plus x transpose x inverse x transpose epsilon. Now, x transpose x inverse x transpose x will be identity matrix I. So, this one will be expected value of beta plus x transpose x inverse x transpose expected value of epsilon, because this is coming out of x, uh, expected value, this is the fixed values. So, beta being a constant parameter value, so it will be beta and expected value of this error term by assumption is 0. So, this will be 
beta. Okay. So uh, you may be then what is the variance of variance of beta cap? Other way we can say covariance of beta cap. It can be proved that this will be sigma square x transpose x inverse. Where sigma square is the sigma square is the um, S S E estimate of sigma square will be S S B minus N minus K minus one. You already seen what is S S E some square error. Okay, so we'll discuss about S S E later on also. So other way we can write how it is it, it can be also proved. So covariance of beta cap is nothing but expected this is also expected value of your uh, beta cap beta cap minus beta beta is the expected value of beta cap this into beta cap minus beta transpose. So you can see from the slide that that we can we can prove that beta minus beta beta cap minus beta so you are writing this beta cap is x transpose x inverse x transpose y now you are putting the same way when we calculate mean value uh, that this one and then you found beta plus of this and beta and this beta is cancelled out so you are getting you are getting beta cap minus beta is x transpose x inverse x transpose epsilon here you have seen x transpose this is basically beta and this one is this now this beta minus beta is cancelled out and this remains. So, now what will be then that beta cap minus beta transpose this will be transpose of this and this quantity will be this transpose x transpose x inverse and here x will come this x will come x transpose transpose is x epsilon transpose is there x transpose on uh, x minus uh, inverse one is this because it is symmetric matrix. So, then your expected value of beta cap minus beta and beta cap minus beta transpose this is nothing but expected value of x transpose x inverse x transpose epsilon epsilon transpose x x x transpose x inverse x x transpose x inverse ok. So, this is a fixed one this one is also fixed quantity. So, if you taken out all those things then ultimately you will be getting expected value of epsilon epsilon transpose into this x transpose x inverse x transpose x into x transpose x inverse. Now, this quantity become i, this quantity is what sigma square, this quantity become sigma square. So, sigma square x transpose x inverse. So, that means essentially we got beta cap which is which is multi which will be multivariate normal basically because there are so many and it will be n there are k plus 1 number of beta values and then it expected value is beta and covariance matrix is sigma square x transpose x inverse. So, this is known as sampling distribution of sampling distribution of beta Okay. And I already told you that the estimate of sigma square will be this which is nothing but a c square coming coming out of the error terms. Now, let us see that uh, from sampling distribution to that test of individual regression coefficients. Here, two co the concept is individual regression coefficient and group of coefficients. First, we will discuss on individual regression coefficients. How many coefficients we have? 
we have beta 0, beta 1 to beta k that is k plus 1 individual coefficients. <coughs> we want to test every coefficient whether they are significant or not. That means, we want to test beta j for j equal to 0, 1, 2, 2 k. Here test means hypothesis test, test means hypothesis test. So, you have seen earlier that hypothesis test means there will be null hypothesis, there will be alternate hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is beta j equal to 0 j equal to 1 to suppose 0 to 1 to like k and beta j not equal to 0 is the alternate hypothesis and obviously for at least 1 j for at least one j. But here we are interested to test individual parameters. So, this is in total by hypothesis test for totality that whether this part in under model adequacy test I will discuss again. But in this case suppose if I consider only the jth regression parameter then this is not applicable suppose the beta 0. So, we want to test beta 0 then h 0 is beta 0 equal to 0, h 1 is beta 1 not e beta 0 not equal to 0. Similarly, beta 1 equal to 0, beta 1 not equal to 0 like this. So, individually we are testing here. So, general term h 0 beta j equal to 0, h 1 beta j not equal to 0. What we use statistics we will use here? we will use a statistics called t statistics here. Suppose, we create a statistics like this which is beta j, this is the random variable estimate value minus expected value of beta j cap divided by square root of variance of beta j cap, this is t distributed because of because you have seen earlier that this from standard uh, from central limit theorem this can be z distributed also provided sample size is large and as the variance of beta j these are all estimated one x z not known. So, we will go for z to t distribution. Okay. So, this is tested this is true when h 0 is true means beta j beta j equal to 0 or h 0 is true as a result we say this is t 0. So, this t 0 this follows t distribution when h 0 is true. Now, this can be written like this beta j cap minus expected value of beta j cap already you have seen this is nothing but beta j. Now, variance part you have already seen that sigma square we have seen that covariance of beta cap equal to sigma square x transpose x inverse. So, this can be written like s square if we assume that the estimate is s square and into this suppose that c 0 0 c 1 1 to c k k and this side also that is c 0 1 like this the off diagon diagonal elements are the variance component. So, uh, this c 0 0 all those things what I am saying this is the component of x transpose x inverse. So, c 0 0 s e square c 0 0 s e square will be <coughs> that variance of beta 0 cap. Similarly, c 1 1 s e square will be variance of beta 1 cap like this c j j s e square will be variance of beta j cap and obviously, j stands from 0 to k. So, what we write then and then that variance of beta j cap is sigma 0 sigma square into c j j. Now, the sigma square estimate is s e square. 
So, we are writing this as a c square c j j. So, and <coughs> under h 0 beta j equal to 0. So, this quantity becomes 0. So, t 0 become beta j cap divided by square root of a c square c j j. Please keep in mind c j j is the jth diagonal element of x transpose x inverse that is c j j jth diagonal element of x transpose x inverse. Okay. Now, what you will do? You all know that hypothesis testing procedure. So, you calculate t 0. This follows t distribution with certain degrees of freedom. That degrees of freedom here is n minus k minus 1 degrees of freedom, because this is the error degrees of freedom n minus k minus 1. So, if you create a t distribution curve like this, and suppose that your it, it should be a two tail test this side alpha by 2 this side alpha by 2 then this is t alpha by 2 n minus k minus 1 and this is minus t alpha by 2 n minus k minus 1. So, if the absolute value of t 0 is greater than t n minus k minus 1 alpha alpha usually will be 0 0.05, then we can say the corresponding beta j parameter is significant. It is not 0, it is not 0, it is far away from 0. Okay. So, this is the test, this test is also known as you just see. So, sorry I have done one mistake that is alpha by 2, okay, alpha by 2 because it is a two tail test. Please remember when it is two tail alpha by 2, when it is one tail alpha. So, see the uh, slide also. So, this type of testing is called marginal or partial test. Individual regression parameter is tested here. Suppose, I say that y equal to 50 plus 2.05 x 1 plus 3.6 x 2 may be minus 0.46 x 3 plus error term. Then what we are saying beta 0 equal to this, beta 1 equal to this, beta 2 equal to this, beta 3 equal to this. So, by <coughs> by this test we are saying that whether this beta 0 50 is essentially 50 or it is basically nothing more than 0. So, as a result what you are doing you are first finding out the beta values suppose beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 here this estimated values. These values are nothing but here 2.05, 3.6 minus beta 1, beta 0, beta 1, beta 2. So, this is 2.05, 3.6 minus 0.46, these are the estimate value. Okay, value, estimated value. Now, you are finding out the standard error of beta j, let it be beta j cap. So, suppose I, I without doing any calculation, suppose we know that the standard error is here 4.0, here 0 0.50, here 1.20 and here may be 0 0.04. Then what will be the t value, t 0 value, t 0 value will be estimate divided by standard error. So, 2.05 by 4, it is almost 0 0.48 kind of thing. Then 2 point, oh sorry, beta 0 is 50, I am extremely sorry, 50 by 4, 50 by 4 means it is 12.50, 2.05 by 0.5 means it is 4.10. 3.6 by 1.2 means 12 into 3, it is almost 3 and 0 0.40 by this, I think this is your 
100 you multiply then it is 4 and equal to 140 then it is almost 80 and this is minus 80. Now, if you compare suppose your alpha is 0 0.05 then you compare T suppose your sample size in this example n equal to let it be 50 and what is the k value k value is that means 1 to 3 k plus 1 is 4 k equal to 3 k plus 1 is 4. So, that means then n minus k minus 1 this value will be 50 minus 4 that is 46 and alpha equal by 2 equal to 0 0.025. So, find out this value from the statistical table. If this value usually I think this value will be may be around 2, this value will be around 2. So, see this is 12.50, this is 4.80, this is 3, this is minus 8. So, absolute value of these all these are more than 2 that means all the parameters are significant individually significant that is what is the individual parameter test. So, that means what I say you have data, you have data set y, you have data set y, you have x. So, x 1, x 2 to x k and then here y 1 to y and this data you have from there using beta cap equal to x transpose x inverse x transpose y calculated this you calculated the variance and all those things and then from there you have got the equation this you suppose you got this equation and this type of this type of cal computation we, we have and then this is the result that all the regression coefficients are statistically significant this is known as individual or marginal test. Okay. But many a times what happen suppose you have a large number of data uh, variables suppose you do not want to test individual parameter you want to test subset of variables suppose I have 10 x variables 10 x variables. So, maybe I want to test that the first um, 5 uh, uh, I have arranged them based on certain knowledge that the first 5 are important and last 5 not important, but I want to be doubly sure that yes last 5 is not contributing. So, in that case what happened you want to test all those 5 regression coefficient simultaneously and then accordingly reject uh, the null hypothesis that this set of variables are not contributing or these are contributing. So, essentially the mathematics here is here is when I have k regressor variables this is my model and these are the things what is known to you and then I have dividing into two parts one is that beta beta 1 and beta 2 where beta 1 is r cross 1 r number of variables and as I have p number of parameters to be estimated where p is equal to um, k plus 1 then p minus r cross 1 this number of uh, variables we are partitioning that means what you are doing you are partitioning a x which is basically x 1 x 2 to x r to x k you are making two partition here this side you are saying x 1 and this one you are saying again. here r number of x variables and here then then what happen uh, total is k minus r number of x variables are there. Okay. Other way actually, <laughs> but but please remember <coughs> there is there is x 0 also x 0 which assumes 0 all the time. Okay. So, this partition from the beta point of view we can write just one will be added only suppose beta is beta 0 beta 1 to beta r to beta k. Okay. So, we are taking first r cross 1 and then 
if it is r cross 1 then this let it be r minus 1 and then the remaining p minus r where is p is equal to k plus 1 minus r. So, these two so this side is b capital beta 1 this is capital beta 2. So, that is what is denoted here. Here you see beta equal to beta 1 beta 2 like this. Now, your test is that this r number of variables or r number of regression coefficients here considering x 0 I am talking telling r number of regression coefficients are not significant then h 0 is beta 1 equal to 0 and obviously, alternate hypothesis will be h 1 beta 1 not equal to 0. So, then what you can do you can you can you can write down the regression equation in this fashion y equal to x beta plus epsilon is equal to nothing but x 1 beta 1 plus x 2 beta 2 because you see this this partition will give you this. So, as a result what happened as a result what happened if h 0 is true suppose h 0 is true then this part become 0 and y will become reduced model will be y equal to x 2 beta 2 plus epsilon. So, that is what is written here reduced model is y equal to x 2 beta 2 plus epsilon. So, essentially what happened then? we have a full model full model which is y equal to <coughs> x beta plus epsilon and we have reduced model where we are writing x 2 beta 2 <coughs> plus let like this. So, ultimately here uh, in this model as x 1 beta 1 term is not included. So, that means, error term here will be more than error term here. Okay. So, the different that means, the sum using this model what you will you will get S S E or suppose using this model you will get S S E reduced model. Then what will happen this S S E reduced model will be more than this and the difference is contribution of this to the error and if that one is significantly contributing then h 0 will be rejected. So, what is being done here then? Then first we calculate uh, m s e what is mean square error and this will be nothing but your s s e divided by n minus k minus 1 and it will be using full model that means, the first model. Now, you have used the second model reduced model and what you are getting you see you are getting beta 2 cap x transpose x inverse x transpose y here x 2 is there only. So, go to slide and see the slide. So, beta cap equal to x trans x transpose x inverse x transpose y in the full model. Now, reduced model beta 2 cap will be x 2 transpose x 2 inverse x 2 transpose y. So, then we will get the S S R beta 2 that one will be beta 2 cap transpose x 2 transpose y. From for previous model we have seen beta, uh, beta 2 x 2. Okay. So, ultimately show the slides. Hello? So, <coughs> beta 2 is x 2 this and S S R beta 2 is this and obviously, here with p minus r degrees of freedom because you have not taken r number of regression coefficients uh, this, uh, this this one total p r is uh, taken out and then what is the s s r of beta 1 that is some square regression beta 1 given beta 2 this will be 
the full SSR minus the SSR explained by this reduced model. So, SSR beta minus SSR beta 2. If this one is significant, then we will reject H 0 that beta 1 equal to 0 will be rejected. Okay. This beta 1 equal to 0 will be rejected. So, you are creating F statistics here by saying that F 0 equal to S S R beta 1 given beta 2 divided by degrees of freedom and then your M S E. So, what will be its degrees of freedom if this one or I can say mod of this I think this it will be it will be always positive. So, if this is greater than f what is the degree of freedom numerator r degree of freedom denominator n minus k minus 1 or n minus p and if we create a alpha significance level if this is the case that means f 0 equal to this equal to this greater than this reject h 0. That means, we have considered that big beta 1 equal to 0 that is not correct that means, those variables are contributing. Okay. So, <coughs> so I will just uh, brief you little bit more here related to the individual regression coefficient we have I have given you the uh, hypothesis test, but the confidence interval is another important concept. So, we have seen that that beta cap uh, or, or you can write beta j cap minus beta j by uh, variance that is a c square c j j this follows t distribution with um, with n minus k minus 1 degrees of freedom, where in k p equal to k plus 1. So, you can write it n minus p also degrees of freedom and then we I have already told you that this is plus t n minus k minus 1 into alpha by 2 and this side will be minus t n minus k minus 1 alpha by 2 then this quantity will be in between this. Again under H 0 beta j equal to 0. So, beta j cap by root over A c square C j j this will be lying in between in between this T minus alpha by 2 n minus k minus 1 T alpha by 2 n minus k minus 1. Hmm. So, beta j cap ok. Now, we want the interval for beta j. So, we will not put 0 this we will not put 0 we will keep keep as it is under h 0 it is 0 that is why test we have done. So, we will write this minus beta j understood we want interval for beta j then this quantity will become beta j cap minus t n minus k minus 1 alpha by 2 root over a c square c j j and this will be beta j cap plus uh, t n minus k minus 1 alpha by 2 and root over of a c square c j j where c j j is the j diagonal element of the matrix x transpose x inverse. Okay. So, with this I will show you one example suppose beta is like this from some data we got beta is like this we will construct a 95 percent confidence interval for the parameter beta 1 in example this is basically example from a book and now beta 1 is 7 point this and because and sigma square is this this was also calculated earlier and see that oh, the c 1 1 that is the x transpose x inverse that uh, this is this. So, we find that uh, that mean the beta 1 cap minus the 2.16 into okay, this one beta 1 cap minus t 0 0.025 1 13 degrees of freedom. So, 3 plus 1 4 
3 2 plus 1 3 that means 16 minus 3 that 13 degrees of that means sample size y uh, is 16 here and this follows like this. So, beta 1 cap you are writing like uh, 7.62129 t is 0 point this is 2.16 sigma square is this 260 on this c 1 1 from the x transpose x inverse that uh, that particular part into 10 to the minus 3 less than equal to this less than equal to this value and finally, you are getting this type of confidence interval. Now, see that the in the confidence interval there is no uh, this is positive to positive one sided there is no 0 in between. So, beta 1 is statistically significant means it is not it is not 0 and from the hypothesis testing using t value also you will find that you will reject the null hypothesis that beta 1 equal to 0. So, thank you very much and it is again taken from this Montgomery book and also my uh, earlier lecture NPTEL lecture on applied multivariate statistical modeling. Thank you. I hope that you have understood the concepts.